Hi, Ask an RDC here, and in this video, we're going to continue on the Making a Sailor of Episode 5, the Hands-On Learning. Before, we talked about the progression of everything that would happen because they jumped from Week 1 to Week 4, and you can see them marching really clean, looking really good, coming together, and a little bit about the recruit crew contact, about how you need to avoid that as much as possible. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Marlin Spike, the firefighting, and the live shooting exercises, and we're going to go uh, more detail that they show here uh, that we are allowed to talk about. So right here, you can see it's called Marlin Spike. Uh, it's the name of the ship. It's also a tool used by uh, boatswain's mates. They use for splitting line. But this is going to talk about the basis of seamanship. Now, this ship is just a you know a container ship. That's uh, it looks like a ship, but it's on land. It's inside a building. You're not water. Don't worry about it. It's not floating or anything like that. But you know they have a simulated ship with a simulated dock, and it's going to go over the getting underway or getting the ship away from the dock, if you will, and the procedures necessary for the line handling team to get underway and mooring or pulling into port and setting up the lines again safely and securely. Now, everyone in the Navy is a, you know, a line, uh, handles line uh, as a firefighter. And some people after that either go topside or, or um, you know, engineering and either they're going to be uh, anti-terrorism or they're going to work with engineering. But regardless, everyone at the very least is a firefighter and a line handler. So that's the things you're going to go over in boot camp, regardless of your rate, unless you're special operations. I'm not sure if they go through this. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, that would be on a different video that we're going to go over after this. The 800 divisions, if you will, special warfare. Uh, but this one, yeah, this is a great team building exercise. Uh, this is probably one of the big fun events you do. And you are great on this later, and you will go through this through battle stations. And uh, usually as an RDC, I see a whole lot more camaraderie and teamwork uh, after this because it's, it's so accomplishing to, you know, finally do Navy stuff, if you will. Marlin Spike is a huge team evolution. Get up here, go, go, go! So if a division feels that they, they operate as a team, they get the Marlin Spike and they find out exactly what real teamwork is. All right, now you're gonna put four figure eight! Learning how to tie a knot and cast off the line and actually tie down the ship, I felt like was a lot more practical. Everybody has to be able to get the ship underway. Ooh, that was a little triggering. Uh, you can see there, she kind of slid her hands along the line. So you gotta do hand over hand because you can get um, your fingers caught in that or any drawer you have you can get caught in that and you can get your hand cut up. That's not good. Uh, but yeah, so it talked about learning knots. You learned the bowling knot, the clove hitch knot, square knot. Square knot's how you tie um, your neckerchief around your dress whites and dress blues. Uh, bowling knot is what you tie around to send the messenger over the side so you can sm send a small line. You send these large lines. These large lines are heavy. Uh, and yeah, it's a huge teamwork exercise. Multiple teams multiple moving parts, everyone has a position, has to play that position. And you saw earlier people were, one recruit was yelling to another recruit. It wasn't yelling in a sense of like being mean. There was, it's motivation, getting loud and communicating. Um, yeah, this is a huge uh, moving piece right here with this, a lot of small moving parts. And under, in a ship, um, you know, I'm not a boatswain's mate, but I still work a line uh, one with mooring because it's a all hands evolution. I'm on a small boy, a destroyer, if you will. Uh, and yeah, I, I love getting on the line. It's, 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 you know, all hands kind of a situation, just like everyone does sweepers. There's going to be a times that even though you're not a boat submit, you're going to be handling line. So, uh, good teamwork exercise, a very important evolution and can be dangerous if you do it wrong. So you got to pay attention. And so when it comes down to line handling, when it comes down to that Marlin Spike evolution, they got to work together. Life before Marlin Spike and life after my spike was night day. 100%. If you, as an RDC, have like a group of recruits that, you know, maybe they're performing well, but they don't really get along after this, they most likely will be amped up, so much energy, and they'll get along and usually get a whole lot more buy in. And you, as a recruit, you're going to feel the same way. You're just, it's a night and day thing because it's, you get you accomplish something as a team, even though you're doing one part, and it feels really good to finally work together to accomplish a goal. So that was really hard, but I felt like it made us, it forced us to work together.
every single sailor is a firefighter. 100%. Every single sailor is a firefighter. Whether you work in engineering, you're a topsider, your operations, your weapons, it doesn't matter. If a ship is on fire, there's no fire department. You are the fire department, especially in the middle of the ocean. It's your house. It's your workplace. It's your place you hang out. If it's on fire, you got you to gotta stop the fire. If it's flooding, you got to stop the flooding. It's up to you. So uh, this is a big evolution as well, uh, and it's something you practice in the fleet all the time as well, especially if you're in the yards, you do a thing called Chapter 12 drill. It's super intense. Other ships come to help you. Uh, yeah, it's really important. Now, damage control training is uh, extremely important. Everybody has to know it. If they don't have the proper training, then you lose the ship. And that's one of the damage control team commanders. You do not give up the ship. You, you don't really think about all the things that can happen while you're in the middle of the ocean. You know, your ship going down or being attacked, and then really all you have is each other and the skills that you learn. Yes, I am. Skills that you learn, but also skills that you practice a lot. Uh, this is basic to being a sailor. Once again, basically trained sailor or basic or boot camp. Firefighting is a big one, though. It's extremely important no matter what. And you practice this a lot and get more qualifications on a ship. I'm, uh, um, I'm really confident that something was wrong. You know, for example, in the um, conference this chamber. chamber. This will be the best work day in boot camp. Ooh, yeah? So that guy was DC1. Uh, he's DCC now, uh, Chief. Uh, he's a great instructor. Uh, there's still great instructors that are there now, too. But they all are super passionate about teaching you. So the motivation you put into it is the motivation you'll get out. Because they got to teach this stuff every day. So they're always going to do it right. But if you come in motivated, that motivates them. And like it just makes it way better. Booyah! I want everybody to repeat after me. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. You would think, okay, so is this mask really going to cover me and keep me alive? It's called confidence. So they call this a confidence chamber. This is where they uh, put the CS gas in there. And um, you have to take off your mask and you have to say your name and what division you're from. Uh, it's a controlled environment. It's safe. Don't worry about it. Uh, but you're going to react or you may not. So you uh, will see some people in this video react like horribly. Um, and then some people just don't react at all. They're just kind of coughing, and some people are just, you can see a little trouble breathing, no big deal. Uh, if you're first, that means you have your mask off the longest because they're going to go all, they tell the whole line to take off their mask, and then they go down the line. I was one of the people at the end of the line, and I reacted horribly to this. It burned my skin. I'm very fair skinned, so it burned my skin, burned my eyes. It definitely caused me to cough, and I was like, all the snot was coming out of my nose and everything like that. You know, I just, I react to chemicals uh, very easily. Um, but if you are sick, the positive about this is uh, this will clear out your system pretty quick. Uh, and the best breath of fresh air you'll get is when you leave this space and you'll feel so much better afterwards. It just clears out your system because your body's trying to fight it back off. Uh, like I said, you either react horribly like I did or it's not too bad. Uh, it's really just different person to person. Chairman, for a reason, it gives you the confidence on the equipment of the Navy. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I would have gave it like a 5. It burns. Oh, it right still here. burns. Like right under my nose, it burns. But I think we sliced it a little bit more than we needed to. Yeah, so she didn't react too bad. You can see you're kind of like convulsing as she went out because she was just coughing. And that's the thing. Like, it's crazy. Uh the more you cough, you feel it tingle as you breathe. And then as you cough, it just gets worse. Uh, like I said, either you're going to affect you a lot or it's going to affect you a little. Um, and it really depends on you. Uh, it's different person to person. So if you go through and you feel nothing, don't make fun of people that go through it and are just dying. Um, if you're a smoker, this is really going to hurt. I, mean, my, I just cried a lot. My eyes were watering. They still watered. I really didn't call for it. Like, it wasn't that bad as it said it was. Oh, you know what? Y'all got confidence in that gear? Yes, That's what I'm talking about. Y'all see this? Yes, that means it's a good day. Yeah, just to clarify, he's saying the confidence chamber isn't confidence in you. Of course, it could be your confidence of your ability to go through it. But in reality, it's the confidence of the gear because you're fine. You feel a little tingly on your skin and stuff like that but you'll be breathing fine while you have the mask. And when you take the mask off and you're exposed to it, you understand, 
oh, this mask works. So it's confidence in the gear and the maintenance in the gear, the maintenance you perform or the maintenance person performs and that you know how to wear it and utilize it properly so that it will protect you. Good day to be in the Navy. Who are you, Navy? I do believe that they're doing a lot better job getting these recruits a basic knowledge of what they're going to be expected to do once they get out to the fleet. So I know when I came to boot camp nine years ago, we had a three or four day course on firefighting and then two days on line handling. And now the recruits are getting it every single week once they hit week four. And yeah, so like uh, Petty Officer is saying here, uh, I don't know if he's a chief now, but at the time, Petty Officer, yeah, that was like that when I went through too. There was like, we went through these trainings that you're seeing here, um, not now, the ones you just saw, and that was it. And then we did it again at final night, and I honestly just like forgot everything. Uh, while I was there as an RDC, we started doing these things called reps and sets, where they would set up little situations that are similar, uh, not as in-depth, but it allowed you to train everything you learned from DC and Marlin Spike. And it was great. I took my recruits there as much as possible because you're also tested on this, not just at final uh, night, but uh, there's another grade you can get on it. But also, like you said, it's on final night. Um, this is great. It allows you to – you go and you do like the the fully built out situation and then here you got the – I want to say ragtag, but it's very simplified. But it still allows you to practice all the skills that you learned, just not in a uh, – when you're doing firefighting, which we're about to show up here in a little bit. There's an actual fire going on, and you fire and you spray fire at it. It's a controlled fire kind of situation. So it's uh, good that you practice this a whole lot more, and it gets more ingrained through you so you can be more successful at battle stations, and then you can remember it more when you're out in the fleet. Until the, the week they graduate. And I think that will help prepare sailors for the fleet a lot better. So I had some questions and comments uh, saying whether or not you sh still shoot live fire. Uh, some people say we only shoot like laser guns. It's both. Uh, so before you shoot the pistol, you will shoot a gas-powered pistol. It has a little, you push the trigger and a gas-powered blowback of the, the top of the pistol to give you 50% of the simulation. I believe it's 50% of the simulation of a gun firing. And then it shoots a laser. So it's a laser gun with a gas blowback, so it gives you the feeling of it. So it lets you practice, get comfortable with it and everything like that in a controlled, safe environment. Um, then you do the live fire exercise in which you're actually shooting rounds down range. Once again, it's a controlled a safe environment, but you're still utilizing, uh, it's a high risk environment at that because now you're using live rounds, but there's so many trained professionals around you with safeties that it's fine. As long as you follow the rules and remember your training that you do a whole bunch of dry firing. And then you do a whole bunch of what's called SAMT, similar to arms marksmanship training or small arms marksman training. Uh, but SAMT with the air guns and the laser that when you get there, it, it's just a little more powerful, but it feels very natural. If you're scared, let them know and just be, understand you're in a controlled environment that is set to be safe or maximum safety with minimal risk and just you know remember your training that's given to you and you'll be just fine oh and as rdc's just keep in mind you are going to have people that come into the navy that didn't maybe didn't think ahead but they have some sort of ptsd of firearms just be very cautious and careful with them and there are still those reps and sets trainings with the uh, clearing barrel supervisor turnovers one of the primary things that we all do as instructors is we give these recruits uh, the experience, the, the real life experience of, first of all, handling this weapon in an environment that's close to reality. It's not quiet, it's not passive. Uh, it, it's gonna take enthusiasm to survive in an environment like this. So that's pretty much what we do. Yeah, and the nice thing about this too, and I think it's purposeful and I appreciate it, uh, is these instructors are not RDCs. So they're usually GMs, FCs, somewhere in the weapons department, really, that uh, are already comfortable with weapons, uh, serviced them out to a lot of people, serviced the weapons about themselves, fired a lot themselves, and also know how to train other people, uh, especially new people who have never fired a weapon before. Uh, they're not going to be yelling in your face like an RDC. They're not going to be like, recruit, fire the weapon. They're They're... They're gonna be they're gonna be yelling because it's gonna be loud or you're gonna be wearing ear protection, but they're gonna have to be yelling at you. It's a very calm environment. They don't try to stress you out. They try to keep you focused and let you know you're in control of the weapons. Nothing's gonna happen unless you make it happen, kind of a situation. 
So don't worry about people barking down your throat or anything like that um, while you're trying to handle a weapon. As long as you're following the rules and staying safe, you should be fine. And they're going to take the time with you to do one-on-one -on -one if necessary. Get a good aggressive stand. Point it at your target like you mean it. Bear by the weapon clear and safe. I didn't miss my target, which was great. So I think I did all right. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed shooting new, uh, shooting weapons. Since uh, the P days to now, they're they're completely different recruits. Every time we walk past um, Pearl Harbor, which is where P days was, we kind of see through the window the people in their PT and their sweatsuits, and we're like, man, that was us only a few weeks ago, and that was us looking out the window at some of our senior divs, and we we're like, man, I wish I was there, and they're marching, and they have on their uniforms and their flags, and that's so cool, and we just got here three days ago. They so I'm actually going to end the video here uh, because they're just wrapping it up. Uh, but what she said is very true. There's times where, um, you know, you're as a when you're first in the few weeks of boot camp, you're going to see people walk, marching around looking good and you're just still trying to figure out how to walk straight. Uh, and then you're going to be that division that walks by because there's times where you get to the combat pool. Uh, firefighting goes by Pearl Harbor, and you're going to see people who just entered boot camp. Keep in mind, be humble, understand you came from that, and just know that there is a part that if you, if you do 100% and give it all in, you're going to be that person that looks clean marching around as well. So just make sure you're staying focused through boot camp. And in this next video, I'm going to talk about just the feeling you get through graduation. And also, I'm going to talk about what you should probably tell your family as far as where they should sit and stuff like that for graduation in itself. But yeah, this next video is going to be the final video of going over this uh, Making a Sailor series. Um, and then we're going to continue on with some other videos with in-depth that this series didn't cover about. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hoo-yah, Navy!